Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. My name is Naveen Joy and I am an upstream contributor with OpenStack. My presentation is about using a reliable ETCD based messaging architecture for OpenStack. So here is what I'll be talking to you about. First I will give you an overview of what is VPP and what is networking VPP. These are the projects that I'm working with currently. Then I will walk you through what's ETCD and how we are using ETCD with our project that is networking VPP. And finally, I will show you how we could use ETCD with OpenStack and what are its benefits. So what exactly is the problem here? First is, if you have worked with Neutron, OBS is the default virtual switch used in OpenStack deployments today and you may be aware of this. So what is the problem? OBS works very well for standard cloud use cases, such as if you want to push 10 gigabits of data and if you want to do bulk transfer of big packets, that's no problem. Everything goes very well. So if you try to push small packets, actually iMix packet, you will realize that OBS doesn't scale very well, which is, I'm not talking in general about OBS, but the default virtual switch in uh, OpenStack doesn't scale very well. But the internet users actually generate iMix traffic, not large packets. So these packet sizes are just one-fifth the size of normal cloud packets. And the average data rate is also very high. It's five times higher. And you will, if you generate these kinds of packets, you will realize that your performance has deteriorated really rapidly. So how to solve this problem? One approach is to use VPP. What exactly is VPP? Vector packet processing is another vSwitch. It can support both layer two and layer three. And what it does is that as shown here, it uses DPDK. If you're familiar with DPDK, uh, just for those of you who are not familiar with it, DPDK stands for Data Plane Development Kit. It's also an open source project under the Linux Foundation, much like OpenStack. And what DPDK does is that it provides various data plane libraries and also NIC drivers that you can use. And by using DPDK, you'll be able to push packets at a much higher throughput. So if you look at this diagram, look at the Linux kernel that's sitting on the side. Normally, in a Linux machine, you will find the NIC cards bound to the Linux kernel. Now in this situation, you can see that the NIC cards are bound to DPDK. So that exactly is the case. You are able to bypass the Linux kernel and you are able to push packets directly using the DPDK software to the NIC. So if you use Linux kernel, the problem there is that Linux kernel is very bad at caching packets. So you have a lot of uh, CPU time that is being used there that's causing latency. With DPDK and vector packet processing, you are able to manage the caching and optimize that cache layer. And you are able to move a bunch of packets and minimize the latency. In this way, we are able to get much higher network performance. It runs completely in the Linux user space, as you can see here. So VPP is able to do fast network I.O. directly sitting in the user space, So, which means that if you want to do switch upgrades, vSwitch upgrades, you don't really have to patch the kernel or reboot your machine. You're able to directly, much like any user application, you're able to upgrade your vSwitch. So that is uh, an overview of vector packet processing. Now what is networking VPP? So networking VPP enables you to control VPP within OpenStack. So if you try to install VPP and use it without networking VPP, you will have to directly work with it and it, that is pretty complex. So networking VPP makes VPP easier to consume within OpenStack. And for attaining this high performance, the host uses 
we host user sockets to talk to virtual machines. More, more on this later. We support the following network types today. We support flat, VLAN, and VXLAN GPE. Essentially, networking VPP is like a control plane for the VPP platform. This is how the architecture looks like. So networking VPP is exactly a, an ML2 driver for Neutron. As you can see at the top, you have the Neutron server and the mechanism driver. Then you have on each of the compute nodes, you have the vSwitch, which is the VPP installed. And there is an agent that's running, which is called the VPP agent program that is responsible for programming the VPP on that node based on what you tell it to do using the Neutron APIs. Then ETCD is a messaging framework that we use in our deployment. So what you can do is you can either use a single node or you can set up a redundant ETCD deployment using a, a three node quorum and it can tolerate a single node failure. And you can also see here that we have also set up journaling. So when you tell the mechanism driver to do a certain task, what if you, at that point, what if you restart the software, right? You will lose that data. So we will save that state in the database. And then from the database, we write it to ETCD. So we have got that journaling to protect restart. For those of you who have, are new to ETCD, what exactly is it? It's a distributed key value store, and it is also open source. It's available on GitHub. The simple way to put it is an application can use the ETCD APIs to read and write data. And it can also support TLS, certificate-based authentication, and role-based access control for security. Above and beyond, ETCD provides a reliable way to store and distribute state data across a cluster of machines. That's a fundamental uh, role of ETCD in our project. It also supports versioning. So data is stored as a version key value pair. And in that way, you can easily roll back to a previous release. So if, if you're using today, Rabbit is, RabbitMQ is being used as a messaging framework. And it works on a command-based architecture. So there is no real way to, if you, uh, you know, you restart or if you want to roll it back to a previous release, there is no real way to do that. You'll have to go back and you know, execute the same set of commands that you did earlier. So it's a command-based rollback, whereas ETCD provides a state-based rollback where you can just you know, uh, add the previous pair of keys very easily. You can bring it up and then convert your system back to an old state much easily. If you're familiar with Kubernetes, this is exactly what the way it does using state-based model of communication rather than a command-based model. You can also watch the data for changes, and it can enable applications to react to these changes in the key value pairs. So how are we using ETCD? So we are using it to store and distribute network states. As I mentioned earlier, the MariaDB database of Neutron is kept in sync with ETCD. And the VPP agent program that is running on each of the compute nodes will observe the desired state. So to give an example, if you want to, when you create a VM, a virtual machine, you make a, or rather, NOVA makes a call into Neutron to provision a port for that virtual machine. So we receive that call. And then what we do is we write that information into ETCD, of course, going through the journaling process. And at that point, the agent program on which the virtual machine is being spun up, that receives an ETCD watch event. Okay, so okay, there is a VM coming up, go ahead and create a port. So the agent will now do the needful, and it will compare the desired state in ETCD, and then figure out that, okay, I need to create a port, it is not there, and will go ahead and do that. So it will push the necessary changes into VPP to match the decide state that you told it to do. And there is also a resync mechanism here. The VPP agent will fetch the decide network state, state data from ETCD, and it will compare it with the actual state when you restart it. 
So it's able to even react to those changes because the, the key value pair is actually stored within ETCD. It can read all of that and compare it against what is the current state and then program the actual deltas into uh, the, uh, the vSwitch. Unlike RabbitMQ, where it's a command-based model, once you send a command, it's done. So if you restart it, there is no way for it to go back and figure out what command you executed. So a state-based model is much more efficient and reliable. Here's an example of an ETCD key value. Here, let's say there is a node named node1, and you want to create a port. So this is the key that is stored with the port ID. And then the value, as you can see, is a, a JSON data structure. This is a key value that is stored in the ETCD database and communicated to the agent that is running on that node. So it has now all the information that it needs to be able to create that port. So what are some of the considerations when using ETCD? The data has to be small. It cannot handle bulk data. And fast disks are essential because it's very sensitive to uh, disk latency. And you can also get out of order events. For instance, if you're running, you know, let's say a configuration where you have virtual machine with security groups and you restart the agent, you may get a message to create security groups before a virtual machine is created. So you will have to write code to handle those out of order events as well. Now finally, how can ETCD be used in OpenStack? So currently what we are using is we are using RabbitMQ and AMQP. So AMQP functions as the broker and the software components communicate by sending messages, instead of messages, excuse me, by sending remote RPC calls. That's basically a command-based model. So when you provision a port, a call is made to, an RPC call is made to create a port and then it receives a response, basically a command that's being sent. So what is the problem? It's hard to scale. That's why you need to uh, have a complex solution like cell. You got to split it out and then how to roll back. And it's pretty complex if you think the way that Nova is designed today using cells. So if you replace RabbitMQ with ETCD, you have a much, highly, much higher scalability and robustness using the state-based model of communication. So this is something to think about, and we have been successfully using this in our project, and I wanted to share this with you all. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you, everyone, for coming, and have a great evening.